Hey there guys, me Monk7 Mad, and today we're going to be doing some Magic Bullet Looks color correction tutorial. And there will also be a free download to the finished version. So what I've got here is a small piece of footage. And what I can do if you like is put out the footage um, with Twixter already pre-rendered etc. Without the color correction and let you experiment with it. Or I can do it without Twixter and just the original video clip just for practice sake um, but today we're going to be using magic bullet looks and we're going to make some really nice color correction magic bullet looks is extremely useful for okay magic bullet looks has gone AWOL okay let's try this again right there we go right yeah so magic bullet looks is a fantastic color correction piece of software where you can edit video clips really nice really well with most video editing software, when you try to do something like color correction, you can only edit certain things, so maybe the the color of it, the hue saturation, so on and so forth, but it doesn't necessarily look as in-depth. It's just like me getting a giant, like, say for example I'm going to use red, it's just like putting a, a red box over it and changing the opacity down so it's a bit thinner, but it looks like it's lying on top of the image. Whereas Magic Bullet Looks gives you that ability to just sort of let the colour sink into the image to make it look an awful lot better. Okay, now the look I'm going for is a slightly cinematic look, and I also want it to be quite sort of bright, and I want the focus to be primarily on the barrette here. <coughs> okay, so what I've done first is I've dragged the full blue CTB in, which is a custom colour filter which is built in. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to get a vignette and we'll put that in and we're actually just going to widen this bit in the middle up a bit just so we've got a bit more light here and by doing this you know the darker bit of the vignette goes to the outside and again this is the sort of technique that you'll use to bring the focus into the center of the gun while giving the edges a sort of faded look now you can muck around with any of the settings and you can actually change the color of the vignette and well, for me black which is the default looks probably the best Okay, you can bring it in from the outer rim as well, and move it which way you like. I think here's probably going to be a uh, a good little space. That's that's fine. I'll I'll leave it there. And I'm also going to drag in another thing, which you know I always get the sort of the focus area done first, and that's by dragging in the edge softness. Now there is an alternative to this, and that's known as swing tilt. And this is very good for cinematics when you can't see the screen at the start at all. You can only see a very small sliver. In fact, if I demonstrate it. Now if I just uh, shift it up just a little bit, if I just click on something else, well, you can see there's only like a thin line which can be seen, which is okay, uh, especially with cinematics when you're sort of focusing on this sort of area here at the start, and this is all blurred out, and it sort of blurs into the image, that's quite nice. But uh, for an all-round thing, we're going to use the edge softness. Now to me, I think the edge softness is great, but you know, one of the things I always tend to do is adjust the, the quality and this basically means that where the blur is it's not so abruptly around this line it, it sort of feathers itself it it makes it more subtle which is a hell of a lot nicer than it being straight bulk block off so I always change the quality to 10 the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look and let's have a quick think right I want to drag a telecine net a print bypass bleach, bypass bleach in and a crush Okay, so we'll drag this one in first, and this one really just enhances the light. And what we'll do is we'll actually turn the silver retention just up to 55. We'll leave the exposure compensation as it is for the time being. All right, we'll also drag on the telecine net. All right now, this gives it a really nice enhanced focus glow, and I actually leave the settings for this originally as they are because I don't honestly think that they really need to be adjusted in any way, shape, or form. What I would do is have the telecine net after the print bypass, the print bleach bypass. Because if you actually look, although there's a minor difference, there is a difference, and I think for the glow that we sort of want, I'd I'd rather have the telecine net a second. But this is your choice. The crush. Let's just put that at the start. You can't probably see what it does, but that's because we haven't actually tweaked the, the actual exposure yet and we actually just want to turn it down just a little bit I'll, I'll actually do this manually to negative 0 0.10 it's only a very nice light sort of trim down and that just cuts out that little bit up there just keeping a little bit dark there so you can actually see what's going on 
Right, next what we're going to do is we're going to go and get the exposure and we're going to drag that onto the image. And we're actually going to turn it down to approximately negative 1.10. Definitely not, not 10. So negative 1.10. Okay, all right, and this will keep it so that the light in the main area will sort of highlight itself, so over there in the sky, whereas the rest of the image appears dark, which is which is really quite nice. But we've still got a few more tweaks to do, so what we're going to do is, the gun is probably one of the main focus points, well, it's the main focus point apart from the actual shot, and, you know, we want to make that stand out a bit, so we're going to use the spot exposure, and we're just going to bring in the edge a bit, around the gun and we'll actually expand this bit just so it's a little bit bigger than the gun and we'll line it up a bit more central and what we're going to do is we're going to turn this up only a little bit to 0 0.30 and what this will allow is a little bit of brightness only minor again another really subtle thing and this is the key to a really successful color correction is keeping a really subtle look okay now you can go in and tweak things with curves um, and you can do this uh, to each layer or as a whole, or you can do both. So, f for example, I can drag in more than one curves layer at once. And I can edit. So if I just turn that off for a minute. So if I just turn this contrast up a little bit. And I'll turn the next layer on. And we'll turn the red up just a bit. And we'll turn the, bl the red down a bit down here. And we'll do the same with the green. We'll turn the green down here. And we'll push the green up here. And finally the same for the blue, only a little bit. In fact, now we'll take the we'll leave the blue more or less where it is on the top and we'll only take it down on the bottom. Okay. Now you might need to make a few minor adjustments should you use this sort of thing. So we might want to go back to the where is it? The spot spot exposure. And you can turn it up to say 0 0.4 or 0 0.5. You know, it's up to you what sort of clip you're using. If you're using my clip, I'm going to use a 0 0.4. The quality of the clip will look a lot better when I've actually turned it back up. It's uh, it's just looking a little naff because I've only got a half quality for the time being. And finally, we're going to drag in an anamorphic flare. And we're going to turn the threshold up to approximately 2. Just in fact, let's let's leave it at one. Uh, is that? Yeah, we'll leave it about one seven forty, because we want a really thin sort of sliver. And you can leave the rest, and you can change the color how you like. I mean, you can have a sort of a white, but if you do that, you can see it's it's really quite strong. So obviously, the darker the color, the more suited it can be. And this is actually quite a nice sort of another sort of method of mixing it around a little bit so say we want to use yellow you can't really see it very much so we'll pull it up a little Ooh. hmm maybe it's not a color one either way the blue for the for the style that we've got I think works quite nicely alright so what I'll do is I'll just quickly save this <clears throat> so we have a copy as I'll call it giveaway and if we have a look the original to the edited version, if I just turn the quality up a little bit, it should just make it look a little bit smoother. Yeah, lovely. Really sort of nice, grounded thing. If you want, you can still add more um, spot exposure to this section. What I'll do is I'll actually just um, import another file. And... We will use... Ooh, get rid of that in a minute. Let's try this one, just to see if it works with this as well. It might not. Not every color correction, as I keep saying, will work with every um, sort of video clip. So let's have a look and see if this works okay, shall we? So it's going to be called Giveaway. And since we just saved it, it will be in the custom color corrections. Giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Oh, yes, very nice. Of course, with things like this, this is quite a sort of... A clip which you can use with a bit of quite a bit of blue, so you can, if you'd like, just turn the anamorphic flares off and just have it like that for another separate video clip. But uh, yeah, I think I think that works quite nice. It really changes the mood of the the piece. Well, that'll be it for the color correction today. 
If you'd like to know any more about colour corrections or you'd like to see another colour correction tutorial, please let me know in the comments section below. The colour correction that we've made today will also be in the description, so go and check that out for a free download. Don't forget to remember Mark 7 Mad is your colour correction dude. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed and uh, I'll see you all later. Peace out.